Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. God is truly a good God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can we just, if you feel like sitting, you can sit, but let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. Let's turn this into a prayer room. Hallelujah. Turn it into a prayer meeting in the name of Jesus. Don't know why, don't know why. 
sing we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you oh made. we're standing here and we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible that's impossible oh and we're standing here we're standing here only only, only because you hey we're standing here we're standing here only because you oh we're standing we're living we're, we're standing moving we're moving because you made a way. Let's see. Someone say he made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Certainly we're thankful tonight for being here. Amen. You being assembled with us this Bible class tonight. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the name, we thank you for your loving grace, your kindness as being here assembled for the ministering of the word of the Lord. We pray your blessings upon your people to strengthen and guide as only you can cause your name to be magnified. We thank you for your strength tonight. Thank you for your blessings and peace. Bless the word at our mouth. We shall be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praise the Lord again to everyone tonight. Youth ministry, you may be dismissed. Okay. Uh, we're doing the uh, continuation of the Gospel of Moses, but we had another handout. Now, what I'm going to say is, if I, when and if, if and when, I teach next in the series that uh, I've started. Um, I'll, rather than make another handout uh, and give you a, like for instance, if you have last week's handout, it's the same, but I, I, I've got some, uh, some folders here with a three punch type thing. And, and so uh, I put them together the addendum to last week's lesson, and I just put it all in here. So perhaps if we do another lesson, you can, or when we do any other teaching, or if you want, you can just put the other papers in here with this. So I hope I explained that good enough for you to understand what I'm saying. All right. How you doing tonight? Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a hot one out there tonight, isn't it? Okay, this evening. Uh, yeah, and, uh, the weather returned. Uh, it was a little cool there for a while, so. All right, let me qualify what I mean by the Gospel of Moses, perhaps if you didn't understand the last time, but the Gospel of Moses, somebody might question and say, well, I didn't know Moses uh, 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 wrote a gospel. So then as a sub-theme, I have gospel precepts in song. So it's the Gospel of Moses, and what I'm actually saying is the gospel precepts or precepts of the gospel are contained in the writings of Moses. Uh, it is said that uh, Moses is quoted uh, 85 times in the New Testament. And so in the New Testament writings, when we look at the Gospels writings of the apostles, um, they were not even written until, I think the earliest is Mark, and it is said to have been written around 50 A.D., which would which would put it approximately somewhere near 20 years after the death and resurrection of Christ. And so uh, the rest of the Gospels were written between 70 A.D. and 110, or 110 A.D. In other words, that gap there uh, almost, uh, let me see, ta -ta -ta. Uh, I guess that would be about 80 years uh, that, you know, uh, after the work of Christ, uh, after his work his death, burial, and resurrection. So, 
Somebody may say, well, what did they preach from? Yes, they preached the gospel, but the scriptures, everybody say the scriptures. The scriptures are the books of uh, Genesis through uh, Malachi. That's the law. And then you have uh, the history books. Then you have uh, the prophets and or you have the songs or the psalms. And you have that context of the books that is the first testament, amen, that we call the Old Testament. And then you have the New Testament writings. Uh, you have uh, the Gospels, again, that were written, the earliest of which was written uh, 50 A.D., which, again, was uh, some uh, 20, almost 20 years after uh, the death of Christ. And the other writings, uh, in that other, you know, some almost 80 years later between the death of Christ and the end of those writings. And so they preached from the Scriptures. Everybody say again, Scriptures. So, so what is the New Testament then? The New Testament is the recording of those events that the disciples that became apostles, uh, they began to write down what they knew. Uh, Peter, excuse me, Luke uh, spelled it out when he wrote uh, the book of Acts. Let's just go. I'm not going to spend time there, a lot of time there, but uh, it, it kind of spells out uh, how and why uh, he wrote his gospel. I mean, his, uh, uh, his epistle, his history book of the book of Acts. So it says in the verse number one, uh, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus. So this book of Acts was written to an individual, okay? Uh, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to, show, to whom uh, also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Everybody say pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, I won't spend much more time there, but also in this same chapter, uh, the 11th verse, I believe, it, the 6th verse, it says, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And so what we need to understand, when we look at the book, amen, there is a purpose. Everybody said a purpose. Uh, the purpose of the book is for redemption and salvation and to give us an understanding uh, of who God is and are really who we are as well. So if you want to write this down, note uh, the book of Psalms, chapter number 8. The Bible says, around verses number 1 through uh, 4, verse 6, I will read just as a portion of that, a quote just a portion, when it says, uh, what is man, when, I, when he began to talk about the heavens, the creation, when I look in the light of uh, the creation of the stars and the moon and so forth, he's mentioning there, I'm paraphrasing, he, he, he begins to question about <coughs> who he is and who we are as a people. He says, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? He goes on to say, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and with honor. And so we see in that context of Scripture there, as the psalmist begins to question our identity, who we are in light of the creation, uh, then we look, and the Bible goes on to speak about a man, man and his creation. And God says he has crowned man uh, with a crown of glory. And I'm paraphrasing. Of all the things that were created, amen, man is the crowning event of God's creation. Why is that? He made him. He made us, as Moses said. He was the first. Uh, he wrote the book of the law, the book of creation. Amen. And the, book of, and the, the Bible says that Moses says, in the book of Genesis, that we were created to be bearers of the image and the likeness of God. So, then, therefore, the book of redemption is about restoration and, 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 and restoring that which was lost in the transgression. It's a book that is full of the redemptive knowledge of truth, amen, and giving, to give us an understanding of who we are and the purpose of God in Christ Jesus until we all come into the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And, and I'm paraphrasing there again. 
Amen. So when we talk about who we are, we are the children of God. Amen. If someone's about to argue with you, say, I'm apostolic. You just say, I'm a son of God. That's who I am. I'm a son of God. What does that mean? That's what we need to understand. So in our articulating, amen, uh, the gospel, uh, in our witnessing both by our, our, our mouth and also as we live out our faith, we need to understand uh, what God's purpose for us is and what is the purpose of God and how do we relate, amen, within that purpose. So, in this, uh, uh, Pastor Barry, I want to thank you again for allowing me this moment to teach. I mean, he's the pastor, and I'm supporting him. My responsibility now is to transfer the authority, not just of the physical aspects of this building, but of the Word of God, amen, to this generation through, uh, with your pastor as he gives me, um, amen, license to do so. My, I, will, I'm, I will do everything that I can to stay out of the way. And cer certainly there are some things, of course, like he says, we're different people, but he's your pastor. Everybody say, he's my pastor. So I I'm letting him pastor you. I'm transferring the authority that God has given me. And you need to understand why we are the way we are. Somebody say, I like to learn that myself. I'm downtown and uh, today and I'm ministering. Um, uh, to those in the Marion County uh, uh, jail down there at the Justice Complex. And uh, this young lady is looking at me, and, and so she's kind of doing some stuff with her lips and mouth. I guess she's trying to flirt with me. And she's <laughs> with the top of her tongue to her mouth and whatever. She's going, I asked her, why did you come down here? I said, why did you come down here? I said, was it just to get out of the, the block? Uh, something uh, along those lines. She said, because I don't want you to waste your time or my time. And so I'm talking to her. I'm not down there to play. Like I said to her, we're not here to play. We're not here to play with your soul. You ought to be glad you have a pastor and those that are supporting his work. We're not here to play with your souls. There's a lot of noise out there, and you've got to filter the noise out of your mind and spirit so that you would hear what God is saying to the church. Let him that hath an ear, just like he spoke to the creation, he said, let there be light. He's saying to the church, let him that hath an ear, let him hear. Because if God don't speak to your inner ear, I'm not talking about this, the, the, the outer appendage of the, 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 off the sides of your head. If God don't speak to your inner ear, you won't know what he's saying to the church. But God said, this is between me and you. I want you to know who I am. Come on, let's give God a praise for that. So we're thankful for the word of the Lord. Okay, again, the gospel of Moses, gospel precepts and song. One other uh, scripture before we go into the handout tonight, the book of Hebrews chapter number, uh, <clears throat> chapter number one and verse number one through verse number three. If you have it there to save time, someone can start reading for me. Hebrews, the first chapter, verses number one through three. I, I had thought to, to um, okay, you got it? Go ahead and read. God who had sundry times. times. Uh-huh. Okay. So God who at many times and in many ways he that had done these things spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Everybody say his person. In theology they have in the philosophical approach to striving to define Amen. Who God is, they have this language that's not in scriptures. They say first person, second person, and third person. But Jesus Christ is the glory of God's person. There's only one. 
Amen. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You will never know the Father except you look at the Son. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 2, he said, Kiss the Son, lest he be angry with thee. They should have paid homage to him. When they talk about kiss, it's not like with the lips, but it's like a bow of reverence. You know how you kiss the hand of the Pope, or to, and you should never kiss, just kiss his hand, so forgive me if you're Catholic. You don't kiss the Pope's hand. You don't kiss the President's hand. But they should have kissed the hand of the Son of God. They should have bowed. They should have understood who, they wa who he was because the scriptures have left on record in the precepts of God who he really is. Huh? In the glory of the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, he is the Son of God. In creation, he's the Father of creation. He's the Son in redemption, and he is the Holy Ghost by promise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. And so, in the word of the Lord tonight, when we talk about the gospel of Moses again, amen, Moses is mentioned 85 times in the New Testament. Remember, the writings of the New Testament came years after, decades after, amen, the death of Christ. So when they preach from the scripture, they preach from Genesis through Malachi, okay? They preach, preach from the law, from the Psalms, and from the prophets, from the histories. And so the message concerning the kingdom is very essential. And here it said in the book of Acts chapter number one, it says, speaking of those things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So the reason why we focus on New Testament writings is because both the law and the prophets, prophets prophesied of Christ that was to come, amen, before he came. And so since in order that we might know who he was and are is, we have to learn and know what the Bible is saying so that when the Spirit speaks, amen, we are, amen, given the understanding. God conveys and gives the understanding of his word. So in the book of Acts, chapter number 7, on your handout on the cover, it is the primary uh, verse of Scripture that points us, amen, to the precepts of the gospel contained in Psalm. Oh, excuse me, let me say this real quick. So the reason why I mentioned the book of Hebrews, chapter number 1, God who in sundry times, amen, in different times and in diverse manners. The reason why I mention that, one of the manners in which, and the various times speak of how he spoke, amen, through the prophets, you know, he spoke through uh, Moses, he spoke through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fathers. He spoke in all of the people that make mention of what God said, amen. They are declaring what they, what they were given from God. So when we talk about the divers at uh, times, those are the precepts and the times at the mouth of the various speakers. But when we talk about the divers' manners, the one of those manners and means whereby com God communicated, amen, his word and his purpose, amen, to his people is in song. Everybody say in song. And so in the three songs of Moses, just to review, the first song is the song by the sea, the second song is the song in the wilderness. And the third song is the song, amen, upon the sea of glass. Amen. Somebody said, how can that be, that future song, the song of Moses? Well, amen, John the Revelator said, and then sang they the song of Moses and of the Lamb. What is that saying to us? The song of the redeemed that Moses and the children of Israel sang after the Red Sea crossing, amen, it is continued, amen, throughout all redemptive history. That is the context, amen, of what God is saying to the church. So there, then, therefore, there must be a permanence of purpose. Everybody say permanence of purpose. The purpose of God does not change. So when you go to these councils, when you go to these big events that all of these preachers are having, and they're talking about a new paradigm that's shifting and God is changing his mind, that was in that generation, say permanence of purpose. The purpose of God does not change. Matter of fact, amen, not in the, in the sense that some are saying, but how it does change, I mean, it changes in the sense that it is a continual movement toward the end outcome of our faith. 
The Bible says in 1 John, the third chapter, amen, beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We're progressively moving to that end, the end outcome of our faith. Amen. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, not as he was in the manger, not as he was on the cross, not as he was when he was a man, not as he was at any point as a theophany, not at any point in redemptive history. We shall not see him as he was, but we shall see God in all of his glory. And there is no man living or dead that has seen God, even the Father, in all of his glory. Come on, let's give God a praise. No one has seen him like that. But guess what? We shall be like him. You ought to give God a praise. We're going to be like him. Come on, saints. It's going to be worth it all. It will be worth it all. So now that we're here, we come down, we come down off of the glory cloud. Now we got to hear all this noise that's down here in this world. But God's going to help us filter out the noise, filter out the filth. Amen. And every man that hath this hope in him will purify himself. Amen. We, have, we are a part of the divine heritage of God. There is a shared nature that we have in him. Amen. Because we are his offspring. We are his offspring. I may have been born, amen, by, by Elizabeth Fields and Earl Lee Fields Sr., but my offspring is from God. Life comes from God. Amen. Children are a heritage of the Lord, but the, but the but what is the fruit of his? I know the scripture. My mind, I'm almost 70. It starts running out my mind. But the fruit of the womb is his reward. You are his reward. You are his offspring. So one of the methods in which God ordained to preserve the permanence of purpose of his word was through song. Everybody say song. God speaks to Moses and tells Moses about future things that shall occur. And he does it in such a way that it is immortalized in song. And so, see, a song is a great way of immortalizing a bent. That is to keep it going and alive, amen, for years. Your children know about my girl because you sang it. It is immortalized because you like my girl, amen. Your wife is your girl, right? Okay, and your son's wife ought to be his girl. Well, songs are a way of immortalizing, keeping a bent, amen, a, 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 alive, amen, continuously throughout each generation. So... Amen. When we look at the songs of Moses, again, I'm going to hurry up and try to do just, again, a short review. But when you look at the song by the sea, amen, the Bible begins to speak to us. Amen. Excuse me. Songs, what songs do is that a song in its introduction builds the anticipation. And in the anticipation, even before the event, the Bible says in the book of uh, Exodus, the 14th chapter, 24 through 31, it says, and the Lord went from behind, and the angel of the Lord went from before them and went behind them, before he was leading them. But when he goes behind them, he's going behind them to fight for them. He's not leading them, but he's going to destroy the enemy. He is going to build the testimony of the children of Israel. The anticipation is great. Amen. You know why it was great? Because they saw God. This is how they saw him. He looked through the clouds, troubled the Egyptians' wheel, took their wheels off till they drove them heavily, and the Egyptians knew that he was God. They said, let us flee from the face of Israel. But they should have flown, amen, the, by the first plague, they should have let Israel go. But God said, they're not going to let you go, Moses. Moses could have said, amen, well, then why didn't you send it to me now? Because God's saying, amen, in his own mind, I'm going to get the victory over the devil. Amen. Don't you know God is going to destroy your enemy? Somebody say, why are you sending me through this trial? God is saying, because I'm going to give you the victory. You don't know it now, but you just wait. Amen. You just wait. You just hold on. Amen. You just trust me. Trust me. Everybody say, trust me. I know it don't look good, but it ain't what it look like. Amen. When God is on your side, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You are in my hand. I will get to the victory, amen, over your enemy. Come on, let's give God a praise. 
So the introduction of the song builds anticipation. The verses of the song tell the story. The course of the song drives the point home. In the verses of the songs of the redeemed at the Red Sea, there's the prophetic utterances that tell the story about what God is going to do, not just what he did at the Red Sea, but amen, because when they did at the Red Sea, amen, begins to speak in the song, amen, and say, he has become our salvation. And then in the verse number 11, he says that, that he said that he is glorious in his holiness. They began to define him separate and apart, amen, from the Egyptian little G-O-D-S's that he defied and fought against. Matter of fact, in your handout, you'll see a list of the Egyptian gods that he fought. Amen. He fought against them and he fought. And the last God of Egypt that he fought against, someone said Pharaoh, but, but I suggest to you that it was Anubis, the God of the dead, the funerary God, amen, that they trusted in in the afterlife that, they, that created the process of mummification. They said it was Anubis, that he is God. But God spoke, amen, to, Mo, to Pharaoh, to, excuse me, to Moses and said, tell them that I when I see the blood, Moses, he tells Moses, when I see the blood, I'll pass. He is the one that destroyed the Egyptians. He is the one that slew, amen, the firstborn, not an angel of death. Oh, somebody said, oh, that was the angel of death. No, God did that one himself. I know there are angels that destroy, but there are times when God said, I can't leave this to nobody else. Amen. There are certain battles that he can't leave to no others. None of the angels going to handle this one. Amen. He's going to cast Lucifer into the lake of fire forever. He's the one that's going to, amen, destroy the enemy by the word of his mouth. He is the God of all the earth, and there is none like him. The gospel of Moses. The Lord wants to drive the point home in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit so that when you stand before the adversary, listen, listen, when I was down there talking to that lady, amen, that's trying to flirt with me, amen, putting her tongue at the top, I, you're like, I can't even do it, making all that stuff. And so I just came out and said, what, what are you doing here? I, she's trying to, I guess she thought I'm going, I'm good. I'm too old to do anything. What do you want? What do you want? Are, 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 you, are you here to, to waste my time and your time? So we eventually prayed. I don't know why I said that, but I did. I was going somewhere. Sometimes my mind is going places. But then God takes it out of my mind. So what was I talking about before I said that? Now, remember, when, pastor, when I'm gone and pastor starts doing that, if the Lord tarry, so he must be getting old. Okay? The Lord wants us to know that we have a gospel of power. It's a, it's a promise of power. Huh? I was, what I was going to say was that while I'm, when, when you're before the enemy, you know how Jeremy gets up and plays the music when y'all worshiping? I don't, I don't know how. Is it on? And y'all get all hyped. You ready to go, right? When I was standing before that spirit, ain't no music playing. When you stand before the enemy, ain't no, ain't no piano playing, no guitar playing. I, that's what we do. Huh? When you stand before the enemy, you know who's there? It's you and God. You ain't going to have no, no solo, no music backing you up. If God ain't on your side, you in trouble. Oh, we do things to try to encourage you in the house, but you need to know when you get to, get to stand before the enemy, you know, need to learn how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give God another praise. And so the introduction builds anticipation. The words, amen, tell the story because there is a sto story to be told. When we speak of the gospel, it is a narrative that tells the story of redemption. Everyone say the story of redemption. Everyone needs to know the story. 
If you don't know the story, you know, we want to jump straight to Acts 2.38. If you don't know Acts 1 and 1 through Acts 2 and 37, you have not preached the gospel, and you don't know how to convince someone's heart to repent and turn from their sins. You need to learn all the rest of the story. Amen. Repentance and baptism follows hearing the story. After they heard the story, the Bible says, and they were pricked in their hearts, and they called upon the God that they had offended. Men and brethren, what shall we do? In response to their call, Peter said, repent and be baptized. Amen. If you don't get them to cry out, amen, because you have ministered the gospel to them, you have not got them to do anything but just get in the water and get baptized. Okay, so on page number six, I told, I said all that. Now on page number six, I got some, I got some uh, numbers on these pages. In the book of Acts, chapter number seven, you don't have to turn to your Bible, it's outlined there in the handout, unless you can't see the words there. Okay. Acts 7, 34 said, This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea. Everybody say, Wonders and signs. In the land of Egypt. All right, hold that right there and go over to the right column down near the bottom of the page. Here are the signs that he did in Egypt. It says the wonders, the signs that he did in Egypt and in the sea. You have to know the story. There's a reason why the ten plagues. There's a reason why he fought the way he did. And, and under this, uh, item number one, he says he turned the water to blood. So evidently, the god, Egyptian god Hapi, is the god of waters. And so he smote the Nile. And they said, Nile giveth life. So he turned the water to blood. Some, in some way, they believed in frogs. There was a different god of the frogs, and his name was Haket. Then there was the god of lice from the earth's dust, dust the god G-E-B, Gib, I imagine. I don't know Hebrew or Greek. I'm just reading what I see. In verse number four, the swarm of flies was the god Kepha. Everybody say Kepha. The death of cattle and livestock, the god of livestock and cattle, was Hathor. Everybody say Hathor. So what he is doing, he's categorically fighting these gods of the Egyptians so that they may know that there is no other god. The book of Romans chapter number one said that they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. They had made gods out of these things. And so this is, amen, what the Egyptians were. This is what we know about their worship. Amen. Ashes turned to boils and sores. So Isis is the god, not of the ashes, the boils and sores. I, I would imagine that that would prevent this if they sacrificed to Isis. Okay. The god of hell and the storm or the storm of fire. Uh, hell in the form of fire. Nut. The god nut. Okay. Uh, number eight, locusts sent from the sky. The god of locusts was Seth. Okay, not that they worshiped the locusts, but that he would control the locusts so their crops would be prosperous. Amen. Three days of complete darkness. Ra, he is evidently the god of darkness. And so death of the firstborn, they say Pharaoh, but I say Anubis. Okay, in the book of Exodus chapter number 12 and 12, he says, God says, for I, everybody says for I, he says, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. So categorically, he had been defying what they called God throughout the entire, 
amen, plagues that he had sent among them. And this would be that final plague, amen, that would let them go. And so again, he says, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. See, okay, so now again, amen, verse number 36, he brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for how long? Forty years. It shouldn't have been 40 years, but it was. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord God hear. hear. Oh, now remember, amen, uh, excuse me, I apologize. Let me go back. Okay, what verse is that? A prophet shall the Lord God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was what? In the church in the wilderness. Everybody say the church in the wilderness. Okay, so here we see Stephen, who's about to be stoned and, and to be uh, made unalive, as they say. That's a new way of saying killed. He's going to make him unalive. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. But they're about to kill him. Amen. It is Stephen that calls the tabernacle a witness the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give them unto us. So God, what God did, he gave Israel the lively oracles. He gave them the law. He gave them the writings. He gave them the commandment. Amen. If you were to read verse Romans 9 and 4, you, could, you, could, you, could, you don't have to go there, but you can note those things that God gave them that they should be keepers of. They would be stewards over the word of God. So what God is doing is giving them his permanence of purpose, his, 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 his word, his, 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 his prophecies concerning a future work. So here again, we have in the book of, I mean, we have in the book of Exodus chapter number 15, the song by the sea. This is not that song, but this is that event, amen, before uh, Moses' departure through death, and they're going over into the, children, to the land of Canaan that would become the land of Israel. This is 40 years after. Now Moses is about to separate, and God, amen, amen, begins to, no, this not here, I apologize. This here, amen, he speaks here is not 40 years after, uh, because I think that's in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 18, Okay. But it was 40 years afterward when he gives them the second song of Moses that was the song in the wilderness. And in that song, he begins to, amen, outline, amen, the history of the children of Israel throughout, amen, the ages and into the kingdom age. And it gives, leaves a prophecy for us there, amen. And we're going to get to that, amen, if we can. The Lord be our helper. Okay, so Matthew penned in this gospel, all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. We read that in your hearing. We read all the way down. I mentioned these things. I'm not going to go back over the wonders uh, that were in Egypt. Amen. But rather, Pharaoh's and others have suggested the tenth plague. Amen. Uh, though against the firstborn in Egypt, both of man and of beast, the actual God to whom the plague was directed was that the God of Anubis. Let's go to the second page. All right. This is part of what we handed out on August the 9th that has been included in this handout. Amen. It's part of the prophecy that's connected, the eschatology, the things of the end. So hold that right there and go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 32. So the second song of Moses or the song in the wilderness, amen, when we look there, amen, we have a, a, a utterance of prophecy concerning um, the, uh, uh, the celebration of, uh, of the Jews and the then Gentiles with them, which is yet future. Part of it has been fulfilled, and there are certain aspects of it that are yet future. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter, amen, number 32, you will look at the conclusion of chapter 31 and see that this is that song. Okay, so in 30, uh, in the book of, I, uh, in verse number 30 of the last verse of uh, 31, and Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. So here is the song in the wilderness. In this song, there are precepts of the gospel. Everybody said precepts of the gospel. That's why we call it the gospel of Moses. And then let's go down to verse number 40, 
um, to verse number uh, uh, 40 or 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. He swears by himself. If I whet my glittering sword. Now he begins to look forward and to, the, uh, to the day of vengeance. Everybody say the day of vengeance. See, Israel, and so when we, when we bear in mind the kingdom, amen, what is mentioned in the book of Acts chapter number 1, uh, 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 the writer records those things pertaining. He, he, he's, he's speaking to O Theophilus about these things that are written in the book of Acts. They are pertaining to the kingdom of God. And so when we look at the history that is in the Bible, all of it speaks to an end to which, amen, re the redemptive work is, is moving to bring us back, amen, to, to the permanence of God's uh, presence when we live with him, amen, forever in his, everybody say kingdom, in his kingdom. So the song is, is striving to convey to us, amen, God's eternal purpose. So when we look at uh, verse number, da, 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 where was I, verse number is it 39? For I lift up my hand, I wet my glittering sword. And so I say, for if I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold of judgment, I will render what? Vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that what? Hate me, okay? I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. This is all in the song. And my sword shall do what? Bar what? So this is something that occurs in the end. A part of it occurs Amen. In the church age. But what happens is Israel turns against God. He prophesies, amen, about what shall happen to them in the latter days. That's what Deuteronomy chapter number 32 is about. You can read it in your hearing, amen, amen, when you read the Bible. I would like for you to read that and re re rehearse it and uh, acquaint yourself with the words of this song. And so <clears throat> he says, I will reward them and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall do what? Devour. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to kill excessively. Somebody said, what kind of God? He's a God that will, a man that will destroy. Everybody say, he will destroy. Now, now, the purpose of why he has come into church, he said, for this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. It, it, man doesn't have to be destroyed, but if you want to go with Satan, you will be destroyed. Okay, let me say that again. Man does not have to be destroyed. But if you want to follow the prince of this world, you will be destroyed with him. Okay, but God has made a way for us to escape. I will make my arrows drunk, I read that, and that the blood of the slain and of the captives from the what? Beginning of revenges. Everybody say the beginning of revenges. And say verse number 43, Rejoice, O ye heavens, with his people, for he will do what? avenge the blood of, blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and we be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song. Everybody say this song. In the ears of the people he and Hosea, the son of Nun. And, to, uh, so, and so when we look at the words to this song, again, as a prophetic song about future events, that uh, from that point it talks about Amen. Uh, God will avenge himself. I want to just go now to the book of the New Testament uh, in the book of uh, John's Gospel. And, I, and I, I submit to you that the beginning of, uh, of revenge or vengeance, amen, amen, is spoken of here in God, John's Gospel, chapter number 12. John's Gospel, Acts. John is before the book of Acts. Helping y'all out. I, I got to help myself out sometime. John's Gospel, chapter number 12, and verse number 30. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Let's read verse 31 again. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be what? Cast out. One more time. Now is the judgment of this world. 
Now shall the prince of this world be what? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will what? Draw all men unto me. So what Jesus is announcing is a judgment against the prince of this world, the prince of darkness, Lucifer, Satan himself, all that was prophesied before, beginning with the first redemptive prophecy with promise in Genesis 3 and 15, and the seed of the woman should bruise the serpent's heel. This is the ultimate act, amen, that initiates all that is to follow. This is the beginning of his revenge. And so he has included us. He has defeated the enemy on the cross. He's not totally destroyed yet. Amen. But he has recruited you and recruited me, amen, to, to execute vengeance on our enemy. He got the victory, but he's going to give you the deliverance. He won it for you on Calvary's cross. He took that open hostility, the hatred, the vitriol hatred that you and I had against him. For the spirit lusteth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these two are contrary one to the other. But God, everybody say, but God. God has reconciled you and me to himself. Amen. Despite the vitriol hatred that was in us, he has made a provision to redeem us from the hand of the enemy. You ought to give God a praise for that even right now. And so when we look at the book of Romans, here's, here's the, uh, the source text of that gospel precept that is spoken there in the book of Deuteronomy 32 and uh, 40 through 43. That's the source text of the fulfillment of this part of the Gentiles celebrating with his people. That is the remnant of his people. Everybody say the remnant. And so we see here, here's one of those references where the Apostle Paul quotes from a prophecy of Moses that is mentioned, amen, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the song, in the wilderness, chapter number 15. Chapter number 15 and verses number, let's read verses again, praise the Lord. That's verse number 11. Okay, okay, let's read verse number 9. No, no, verse number 8. And now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Everybody say, made unto the fathers. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as, is, as, is, as it is written. For this cause I will, what, confess thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name, okay? Uh, da, 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 wait a minute, where, did I, where was I at? And sing unto thy name, verse 10. And again he said, rejoice ye Gentiles, what? With his people, and that's a direct quote, amen, from, amen, the song in the wilderness. And verse number 11, and again praise the Lord, ye Gentiles, and laud him all ye people. So we see that God has given us his word, his promises. He has unveiled them to us, and he wants us to understand, my purpose does not change. So I say, okay, how is it that I have the power to execute vengeance against my adversary? Turn to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. 2 Corinthians Chapter number 10. Okay. Verse number 1. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that same confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us 
as if we walked according to the flesh. You know, you know when, you're, when, when, when Pastor Barry and the ministers do minister the word of God, there always will be someone that wants to contend with us. So no doubt in that church, amen, this is a response by the Apostle Paul that when I am present with you, he doesn't want to start some kind of commotion and be bold toward them, but he's, he's striving to be bold in his communication to them as he conveys what the gospel is all about. Amen. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as though we walk against. You know how you have it made up in your mind you're going to get somebody? You say, I'm going to get them. When I see them, say, well, then you start rethinking it. So I better not do that. It might not be too good. Huh? He has these thoughts about how he would conduct himself. He says, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as though we walk according to the what? For though we what? Walk in the flesh, we do not do what? So I can't war in my flesh because that's a spirit I'm fighting. When you deal with somebody and there's a conflict, no, don't say the devil is in you. You don't ain't got to say that. But you know it's the devil when two people can't get along. Somebody's got to take the high road. Somebody has to humble themselves. Because what the enemy wants to do is to keep us at odds with each other. Because as long as he does that, he has the advantage and the church can't move forward. So somebody got to humble themselves. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imagination. That thought that he had, that thought that you have, that wants to force you in a certain direction, cast it down. Don't let it, let, don't, don't let it have rule in your spirit. Don't let it dominate your mind. Because when you get in the presence of your brothers and or your sisters and you are driven by a spirit like that, you will destroy the relationship between you and that individual. But he says again, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, here we go, and having in a readiness to what? Revenge all what? Everybody say revenge. All disobedience when your obedience is what? You need to revenge yourself on the head of your enemy instead of the head of your brother and sister. Take it out on the right spirit. <laughs> Don't take it out on somebody else. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God. Here we go. What time is it? 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Somebody let me know what time it is. Huh? 8 o'clock. Here we go. Fin finishing up. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. There's an enlargement that comes with the gospel that, 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 that communicates the power of his work, amen, from, amen, through our Lord and the Holy Ghost to us. You know, you, in your car you have... You have the power plant of the car. It's the engine, okay? But you have the transfer of power through a transmission. It takes the power. It don't, power does not originate in the transmission. It receives the power and sends it to the wheels. And the wheels go in motion and drives the car. Huh? The power is not in you. It's not by your power, neither is it by your might, but it is by what? The source that is the Spirit of God. It is by the Spirit of God. He transfers the power to you to live out your faith through the preached Word of God. That's why we need to minister to you the gospel, its expected outcomes, and how it gives us the capacity Amen. To live out our faith. In the book of 2 Corinthians, final scripture, chapter number 6, start reading at verse number 11. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. 
our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened. That's a term that has to do with that internal conflict within each of us, not a straight line. But if you're between a rock and a hard place, you can't turn to the left or right. You really don't know what to do. He said, you are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bowels. That's the inner war that's going on within your spirit. Everybody say an inner war. It's inner war that's going on in your spirit and that goes on in my spirit. I'm not pointing the finger at you. All of us have this struggle within us, the capacity, but we have a capacity to overcome. Everybody say overcome. Okay, so in verse number 13, now for a, maybe finish read verse number 12. You are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same, that's a suitable reward for damages. The, the enemy damaged your innocence, took it away from you, robbed you of your childhood, made you what you have become. The composite total of your choices have, 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 have constructed your character, and that's the way you are. And the way you are, the way you are is because you listen to whatever spirit talked to you. Now God is saying, I'm going to give you the capacity to cast off that yoke. Everybody say, cast it off. Amen. To get your revenge on your adversary. And here's how you revenge yourself on him. Now for a recompense. A recompense is a legal term that has to do, amen, with compensation against damages that have been incurred. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Everybody say, be also enlarged. Okay, now drop down, and here's how you stay. Amen. How you, here's how you cultivate that enlargement, amen, and, 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 and expand that growth, that personal spiritual enlargement wherein you bring under authority and you put your foot on the adversary's head. And so he begins to give them some follow-up work here. Verse 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. He's, he's restoring us, children of God. We are his heritage. Wherefore, everybody say, wherefore, and come out from among them, and be ye what? Separate, saith the Lord. I know people get tired of that, but the Bible said, come out. Amen. You, you can cast the devil out, but he ain't going nowhere unless you come out. Oh, let me say that again. That sounds good. You can, you, you, can, you can strive to cast the devil out. Let me say it like that. But he ain't going to come out fully until you come out. Come out from under his influence. Come out from under his power. Come out from under his capacity to destroy you. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Amen. Saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And I will be a what? A father unto you. And ye shall be my what? Sons and daughters, saith the Lord, what? This power that we have, this recompense, uh, the recompense of the gospel, this spiritual enlargement that we have that Moses prophesied about in terms of the beginning of revenges, which I submit to you, amen, is when Jesus died upon the cross, amen, and the capacity of the gospel to, to, to give you the capacity to avenge yourself on your adversary. Somebody said, Pastor, lay hands on me so the devil will run. <laughs> he, your pastor, he, he ain't got that kind of power. <laughs> huh? Uh, the Bible says, commit your ways unto the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He ain't going to flee if you don't resist him. If every time he tempts you and you say yes, you're yielding yourself. But he gives us the capacity to yield. There's a song that says, yield not to temptation for you this sin. Each victory will aid you some other to win. You know there's truth. In, that's why we need to sing songs and sing songs that have meaning. Yielding is the place where we give ourselves to the adversary. Temptation is the battleground. You haven't sinned just because you're tempted, but when you yield, you have sinned. Huh? But if, everybody say if, if a man sin, it's not over yet. We have an advocate with the Father, and that is Jesus Christ who is righteous. And if we confess, 
and forsake our sins. Everybody say forsake. Confess and forsake. Don't confess over and over and over. That's not forsaken. Okay. Everybody say confess and forsake. All right. That's the end of the class this morning. Any this evening? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Any comments? Any questions? Thank you for coming. Y'all don't like to say nothing, do you? I didn't give you enough time. All right. God bless you, Pastor Barry. You want to come? Thank you for coming and listening. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. That was a powerful Bible class. Let's give the Lord one more time a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. As our officials come forward to receive our offering, um, are there any announcements? Um, I do have an announcement. Um, I want to see the following individuals or families quick, just real quick after church. Uh, it'll be less than a minute. Uh, Sister China, Brother Oscar, and your family. Um, Brother and Sister Wakachek. Um, Sister Angela and David Spells, they're not here. I don't see them in the crowd. Uh, Sister Terica, she's not here. Brother Brandon. Um, Sister Deborah. I don't see the Parker family here. Sister Steele. Y'all can see me just right over here after service um, for about less than a minute. Um, that would be great. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is doing great and wondrous things. We've had some, amen, some wonderful opportunities to uh, be more of an influence in the community. And so I look forward to seeing what God is going to do um, just with the doors that he is opening up. Amen. How many of you want to be a witness for Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be a witness. Amen. While the officials are coming, amen, just another announcement. The AFFI conference is coming up. It is uh, September the 24th, correct? 23rd? That week. All right. 20, 24th through the 28th. Amen. We want to... Um, we want to, amen, be participating in that conference and looking forward to having a great time. Also, we have the usher uh, board who's having a service the 15th, as well as the altar workers committee having something going on the weekend of September the 21st and the 22nd. Amen. And so there's plenty of opportunities for ministry and to be ministered to. And also, amen, to, for opportunities for training um, and just being, just knowing more about Jesus, amen, and the things that God has given us. And so, amen, we have a few things going on this month, amen, that you can be a part of um, and be ministered to and, amen, be equipped, amen, to do what God's called you to do, amen? Amen. Let's stand our feet as we're getting ready to take up our offering and you're in the hands of the officials. Amen. Let's stand our feet as we're getting ready to close out.
Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. Lord, we thank you, God, for sound teaching, sound doctrine. Lord, we thank you for the man of God, Lord God, the bishop. God, that is still here with us, Lord God, giving him strength continually, Lord God, to labor with us in the ministry. Lord God, we pray a hedge of protection around, God, everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord God, from seen and unseen danger. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to minister to us even after we leave out of this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Real quick, all of those that, that I called your name, if you can meet me over here. Amen. Meet me over here. festival slash some type of fair letting the community